MMA fighting here at UFC 228, speaking to the UFC welterweight champion of the world, Tyron Woodley, who fights Darren Till on Saturday. Uh, and Tyron, I mean, first thing, you, you said yesterday that this was a very personal fight for you. Uh, the lead up to this fight has been, I think, more respectful than we would have expected from the Colby Covington fight. Why is this a personal, such a personal fight for you? You know, um, I just want to go out there and prove once again that I'm the greatest of all time. And um, Darren Till is a worthy opponent. He brings a lot of offense, a lot of power punching, and um, you know, definitely is a more difficult opponent than Kobe Covington would have been. So he got a little bit more focus on him, a little bit more attention and detail, and um, I'm ready to go out there and put it on. I mean, the last time you fought in Dallas, that was the Carlos Condit fight. It feels like that was really the start of, of your run when people really started taking you seriously as this legitimate title contender. Does this place hold any significance to you, any extra significance, uh, you know, having your performance before and considering what you did there? You know, everybody thought I was going to be overly wrestling Carlos as well. Um, they said I would do more to strike with him. Uh, he was the number one guy at the time. I was the number 10 guy. I was in Darren Till's place. I was calling out the big dog. And, um, you know, I don't think he, I don't think he discredited me. I think he respected me. I think he just couldn't figure out how to deal with me. And I don't think Darren Till is going to know how to deal with me as well. So um, the only significance is um, just being here. I was victorious here once. I'll be victorious here again. Yeah, I mean, you even mentioned those days, your mindset, you know, like you said, you're the hungry guy coming up, calling your shot. Darren Till's now on the other side. Do, do you see any similarities in him in, in that regard, just in that place? Like, can you, I, uh, I guess, uh, relate to where he was is now? I can relate, but I'm, I'm the hungry guy again. But I'm the hungry guy with better skill set, more well-rounded, sharper, IQ is better, more experience, and, um, you know, fought against the best of the best. And um, now I'm hungry with all that experience behind me. I'm a way more dangerous opponent now than I was then. You, it's interesting because, I mean, you've spent the majority of your title run really preparing for specialists. Stephen Thompson, Damian Maya, they had very specific things they were good at. Uh, and you're such a game planner. With a guy like Darren, who maybe isn't such a specialist, uh, is this easier for you in terms of preparation or is it a little more difficult because you have more to, to think about? I mean, he's still a specialist. He still has one way to win a fight. He can only win by knocking me out. He's not going to beat me in five rounds. He's not going to outpoint me. He's not going to outwrestle me, grapple me. He's not going to throw a punch for punch for me and win in a, in a one-punch KO war. He's not going to win any of that. He has to knock me out to win. So he's still a specialist. Going through that, that series with Wonder Boy and Maya, really immersing yourself in their specializations, what did that do for you as a fighter now that you're on the other side of that? I mean, it forced me to actually go into their mind. Why are they doing these attacks? Nobody's been able to stop their initial attack. What happens if you do stop that? What are they going to do next? I had to learn the mind. So now some of the skill sets I possess, it's almost like I harness their powers. I learned the, 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 the sport fighting you know, karate so well from Sage and Raymond Daniels and Avery and all the guys that came in, that now I can also use those things. Same thing with you know um, Damian Maya. I understand his game plan, his setup, how he got to the half court, how he got to the sweep, how he got to the back take, the way he did the un unconventional rear neck choke, which we would say was on the wrong side, his grips, his abilities to control you. Now I can utilize those things. So at the time I couldn't stand it, it was too specialized, it was very annoying, but now I can utilize those skills. I mean, you're such an intelligent fighter, preparation through and through. What do you think when you hear Darren say that you can't replicate his size and his style in the gym? I can't replicate someone at six foot two, six foot three in his weight. Listen to how that sounds. There's no way on earth I can find any human being that can possibly be the same size in the same way. It's answer is his own self. Uh, just switching gears really briefly, was there ever a conversation, uh, I guess, with you about the Kamaru Usman thing, bringing in the backup? Did you find out the same way as us, or was that even something the UFC asked you about? You know, I'm just focusing on fighting Darren Till. That's what I prepare for. I put a great training camp together, and um, you know, I'm assuming he's going to make weight, and um, that's what I'm thinking is going to happen. If anything changes, we'll, we'll tackle that when I get there. All right. Well, hey, last question. I mean, I saw that you pr predicted uh, a knockout. What is the path there? What, that's the shot you're calling. How does it happen? What does this look like on Saturday? I still feel the same way. Um, the, the opportunity to present itself, it'll bring itself to me. I won't go after. I won't have to go after it or have to force it. When I see it, I'll know and I'll go. And it'll be it'll be go time and that'll be it. Appreciate it, Tyron. Good luck.